what was the central issue with uh, mixed flow reactor in non isothermal asking question is very bad huh? i think you know starting straight away is best i think yeah anupriya what was the problem why you were so much worried about this fellow mixed flow reactor so what happens feedback is always happy what happens what is the issue there are multiple steady states yeah i mean why should i worry if, if there are multiple steady states because huh? you will be either getting exceeding temperature or you will be getting lower conversion yeah particularly unfortunately when you have calculated from uh, energy balance a temperature which is in that middle point okay and also you have uh, conditions corresponding to a line which goes through that three points and unfortunately what you have is only middle point without knowing so then you may be thinking that that is the temperature maybe around 70 degrees 80 degrees but suddenly it may shoot up to 150 or 200 degrees where everything will be burnt okay so that is the reason why immediately after uh, design is done for mixed flow reactor non isothermal design then you have to check really whether these steady states you know the particularly temperature whether it is correct temperature or not if it is not correct temperature and definitely when you are uh, when you have to operate only at that point that middle point because if you go above some explosion may be occurring if you come below there may not be reaction at all so you have to operate only at that point what you have to do now you have to go for control and have an excellent control and if it is going away see earlier on its own if one temperature increase is there 1 degree centigrade so then it was coming back on its own you know under steady state conditions and even if there is one point less and you know, 1 degree less less than the operating temperature maybe 199 again it will go back to that particular temperature but this unsteady state temperature is dangerous if it moves up then it goes to the next steady state maybe 200 kilo I mean, not kilometers 200 uh, <laughs> degrees away so then you will have a problem similarly when you come down then it may go to that uh, you know that's called extinguishing point so that means the entire reaction may get extinguished so that means particularly in the case of combustion that is called extinguishing like you know bunsen burner when i told you when you put too much gas why it is uh, switching off on its own was that the amount of uh, gas is more and the temperature that is the heat that is available in the flame is not sufficient so that means the all the gas should be heated to that temperature but when you suddenly increase the <coughs> flow rate you have more amount of cold fluid cold feed where there is no you know there is no the temperature cannot sustain on its own right that's why it will get extinguished switched off okay so that is why if you have i think very low means anyway it may not catch fire so th those are the two extremes so i also gave you some practical examples what you see every day you know match stick and all that so that that will make some interest in you okay i mean the daily things what we see also we can see in the actual reactors right and all that what we have discussed is only for simply irreversible reaction a going to r so what kind of these uh, graphs you get if i have for example reversible uh, exothermic reaction of this type what kind of uh, qg curve you get by the by for this kind of situation can you just think you are not at all expanding your brain i say okay so i think you are interested in uh, submitting assignments in the moodle but all that is there but i think you know no mood in the class yeah absolutely you don't have any mood in the class i think you know you are only working on moodle 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 can you expect i think you know the s shaped curve can you justify now no. see i cannot keep on telling the same thing you know grinding 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 finally you know like sinking core model the particle may disappear you may disappear after some time because of my grinding okay but i think nothing is happening no reaction absolute calm before storm okay i think uh, absolutely no idea no okay can you justify why i think s shaped s shaped curve you get for uh, a going to r i explained also huh is what is the shape but i am asking what is the reason <laughs> what is the reason physics i say all the time i think now semester is about to be over i am talking about physics 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 
you are talking about chemistry 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 okay your chemistry with other teachers and all that Increases, the initially it increases, the QG increases, mm. but at very high temperature. Initial increase means you should increase speed. Mm. See, we have S-shaped curve. What is the justification for S-shaped curve? Unfortunately, if you apply to some college where you want to join for uh, uh, you know PhD and all that, then if this kind of question is asked, what do you do? I say they they won't ask you to derive. They will simply ask you explain how. Ah, Abhishek is telling. Very true. We will give him a chance. Ah. So initially temperature is low. Ah. Initially temperature is low. Concentration is high. Yes. But rate of reaction is still uh, low. Still, still low. At the upper pressure, the concentration, concentration and the temperature shoots up. Because that is uh, rate of reaction shoots up. Mm. So the heat generator. Also so you already come gone to shooting up temperature. Yes. I am talking about S shape where it goes like this. Yes. After the initial, after the initial part, the second part. Initial part, what happens? Temperature is low. Even though concentration is high, rate of reaction is low. Heat generation is low. Temperature increase is low. How many lows? Okay. And then after some time, the concentration, even though it is low, temperature will pick up. So now, when it is started raising very steeply, then you have the right combination of temperature as well as Concentration, even though concentration is low, temperature is picking up. But finally, temperature is very high. But what is not picking up? Concentration. That's why it has to get flattened. Again, remember I say, how many years I have to tell you same thing, you know? Yeah. But I think all of you have a wonderful technique that the moment you cross the door, I think you will forget everything, whatever is discussed. Is it sapam, huh? car, uh, you know, some kind of curse that no one should remember? After class is over, I think I don't know. I think I know this, this is what is happening. Okay, anyway, it is unfair to ask you because I think uh, my time is going. Okay, so for A going to R, this kind of uh, QG will be like this. The downtrend is not there for irreversible reaction. Irreversible reaction. Why should here be that uh, uh, downtrend? Because of the backward reaction. Okay? Because of the backward reaction, so now you know it goes reaches a maximum. That means rate is reaching a maximum. So that means heat release will be the maximum. Then rate decreases. You have also seen you know that uh, our graphs. Okay? So that's why you get this kind of shape for. A going to R, uh, you know, reversible uh, reactions. Okay, I mean, even if it is second order, A plus B going to R plus S also shape is same. Good, and here, uh, I think after reaching the highest temperature, the concentration of R is more. Na, sir, concentration and temperature both are concentration high. Concentration of R is more. I mean, what is the relationship between concentration and R? Concentration and temperature both are high. How concentration is more? Uh, forward reaction. First of all, it is minus R A. Yes, sir. Okay, how concentration is more? No, sir. For reversible reaction, I am talking. For reversible reaction, that is R. C R is more. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, so after reaching the max, uh, I mean uh, maximum point. Which rate you are talking? Rever what is the reversible? But what rate? Minus R A. Okay, but the the, the difference between forward reaction and my uh, backward reaction is minus R. Okay, minus R A equal to K1 C A minus K2 C R. What is K2 C R? Is the backward reaction. What is K1 C R? Is the forward reaction. So, what is overall reaction? Again, we are going to LKG. Yeah. So, R, that R only we are talking. It reaches maximum. Even though his doubt is that you know concentration of C R increasing, why should it fall? It will naturally fall. But temperature is increasing. Heat release only decreasing. Temperature is increasing. Right, temperature is increasing. Okay, but only heat release will be less. It reaches maximum, and then from there it comes down. Right? Yeah. So that is what. So now, when I want to draw QR lines here, uh, yeah. By the way, where I have to operate on this line? Here. Okay. Right. 
So, when I start for example, you know I may have a situation where I may have uh, okay, this, this or uh, maybe I think I have drawn it to okay. So, maybe I think I will draw this, which one you choose? Because all of them T naught is same, this is T naught is same. So, depending on the slope u a and also you have sigma of f i that, that equation is same. So, because this is q r line, this is q g line, this is q r line, q r, q r, q r, but different uh, slopes. Okay? So, normally we will try to choose this, why? Because conversion will be maximum corresponding to this q g q r. Okay? So, but you know why I am telling this one is that here it is inevitable for you to have control. Yeah, that will give multiple steady states. But if I go here, safe, no problem. But still, the concentration is, I mean, the conversion is very, very low. So that is the reason uh, when you have this kind of situation, you try to go here, and the, but this is again very, very low. The other one is not a thing. So here somewhere. Otherwise, what you can do is you can now draw a line like this. So that means you are deliberately changing t, t naught. Right. So, and also the slope, slope means you know F a yeah, sigma of F i C p i plus u a. So, all those variables you have to try to manipulate and t naught also you have to push it. Right. But when you are uh, trying to push t naught, you know that is why so many beautiful things are there in reactor design. So much brain is required for doing uh, you know reactor design. Right. So, way I told this one is that when T naught is moved, we do not know whether it will be economical or not. That means, before entering the reactor, you have to increase the temperature of the feed. So, you have to use a different heat exchanger. So, some other uh, heating system. So, all these things, overall picture is all these things you have to take into picture and then find out whether simply at a lower uh, temperature T naught is it economical operating here or drawing something like this may be economical because that slope is very very steep there okay slope is uh, i mean so slope is very very steep when i want to change the slope what are the conditions i have uh, feed rate correct no sigma sigma f i c p i is nothing but feed rate only f naught so that means f naught should be very large when you have f naught very large what will happen to the overall reactor uh, size volume should increase because residence time will be decreasing Okay, because again F naught is nothing but volume, volumetric flow rate into C A naught. No? So, that is why so many things, so many connections, particularly non isothermal design when you are doing all these problems will come. Those are the issues you have to appreciate. At least you should know what are the problems. If you are able to find out what are the problems and solution you can find out later. That is why all the time I have been telling what are the issues, what are the problems. Do you know the problem in, re, in the uh, design of uh, you know mixed flow reactor or plug flow reactor. Plug flow reactor this problem will not come very happy. Why Swami? I told you I, I told in the class not only you everyone. Yesterday I told why this multiple steady states will not exist in a PFR. Do you remember? Yeah, what is the reason? There will not be any back mixing and any accumulation of heat in the plug flow. Yeah. Will, it will, it will be simply washed out. Okay, there is no communication backward this uh, uh, you know that increase in temperature or the, uh, sorry uh, heat accumulation and all that will be simply washed away. If there is a temperature rise, it will just move away. But the problem there is another problem is parametric sensitivity, right? That means at a particular point, particularly that is very dangerous with the temperature uh, T naught, you know, feed temperature. When feed temperature is increased slowly, at one point it shoots up. You cannot control anything in the reactor. This information I am not able to give you more except words only. So, I think Bayless and Amundsen there is a paper, Bayless and Amundsen, B I, B I, I think yeah, Bayless and Amundsen, under Amundsen if you search a lot of this information uh, you will get. So, there actually they have varied various uh, T naughts feed temperatures and then shown at what temperature uh, at what feed temperature it shoots up. Like you have shown that figure no Ramakrishna, 
that kind of figures you can see. Okay? And another my question is the plug flow yesterday I, I think it skipped from my mind to ask you, if I have a recycle reactor will you have multiple steady states? See extending, extending brain is, you should question me, yes, because there is feedback. Okay? You see how much beautiful information is there in your brain if you want to bring it out. But Swami, Swami started laughing now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, subject is laughable or? Uh, huh? Okay, good, fine. So, this is one thing and the procedure is same again to find out you know steady states and all that writing in energy balance, material balance and then drawing the line or solving both the equations and then trying to find out. Okay, good, that, that is the one. So, um, I, I may also have a reaction something like this. So, that is why last year I have also not done. I think after seeing you, I thought I want to do more and more. <laughs> okay, because you are silently uh, absorbing. I do not know how much you are absorbing. Okay. So, is this A going to R, R going to S, yes. it is very nice funny graphs you will get. Okay. Q g and uh, temperature, right? If both are exothermic reactions, exo, exo. So, I guess. They are irreversible reactions, right? They are irreversible, huh? Excellent. Good guess. Okay. Or in other words, snake. Like this. Oh, very bad snake. Yeah, like this it goes. Okay. This is like snake, no? If you put that, I think. <laughs> okay. So now in this case, how many steady states you have? <laughs> yeah, this also lowest one. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, yeah, I think this also. 5. Huh? 5. Oh, yeah, 5. Right? And uh, as usual, this will be unsteady state and uh, intermediate, this will be unsteady state. Okay. Anyway, I think that is only just for information and I can also give you if this is exothermic and this is endothermic. Just for information only what you are different shapes, you know how many beautiful things are there in uh, reaction engineering. I just want to show it to you. Okay. This is A going to R, R going to S, but this is exo and this is endo. Huh? Very good, beautiful. So, it goes like this false. Good. So, now next one, we have q g and t, but here I have a going to r, r going to s, but the first one is endo and this is exo. Yes, that is why I have drawn this also. It goes below, comes out like this. So, if you like snakes, I think you will get lot of snakes in this uh, multiple steady states. Okay? Good. Yeah. There is another thing also which uh, we have to just discuss about ignition and uh, ignition and uh, yeah, extension, extension and ignition points. Okay? So, those points we will discuss for uh, you going to our normal uh, shaped curve. Okay? So, for normal x shaped curve, q g versus t and of course, also q r is there, both are there. Um, let me draw like this curve. Okay. So, I may have a line like this that we know already or I may also have, which is just touching here, this is 1, this is point 1, this is point 2 and this one we know, you are experts in this now, 
this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Okay. Now, next logically it may be like this. So, this is three. Oh, sorry, sorry. I think okay. So this point is put as four. That I will uh, give you. Uh, this is five. This is five. This is six. This is seven. Yeah. So this is eight. Then this, of course, we know this is nine. So meaning of this is. If you keep T naught changing, what are the various stages? You know the entire curve moves. Okay, how the reactor move? Uh, the, the, how the conditions inside the reactor moves? Right. So that means we are starting here. This one we know point one, and this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, good. So now if I plot them. Again, this is uh, just uh, yeah T versus T naught. For example, this one is T naught one, T naught two, T naught three, T naught four, T naught five like that, right? T naught one two, T naught five. So T naught is the variable here. That means I am just trying to find out what will be T T is in the reactor when I vary T naught. Okay, so you will get, yeah. So I mean, when you travel here, this point will be there. This is one. Then it is moving slowly, so slowly increasing. Qg is increasing. That means temperature is increasing. This is also temperature is increasing. Here we have another temperature. So all that I can show simply as uh, like this. Okay, this is point one. This may be point two. Point three, and then it goes like this. Goes like this. Okay. So this is, this point is point four. Here you will have somewhere point five. This will be point six. This is too much. This I turned it too much. Yeah. So here, uh, where is point six? Yeah, this will be point six. Then, of course, here you will have point seven. Point slightly away. Point eight. Then here point nine. Okay. So I think this point also slightly. I have to draw. Okay. So this is point one, point two. This is third point. So like that. So what will happen is, you know, it is a kind of hysteresis when you are moving from one to two, right? So one to two, one is here, and then suddenly it may go to six without traveling all that distance. Okay. So that means it may straight go. Like this, right? And then that means this is the one. It may go like this. So this point is called ignition point. That means suddenly I have a temperature here, and next temperature is very high. It is not next small temperature, next all small temperature. That means it is not going through all, you know, uh, that increment uh, temperatures the way we are imagining. Right. So suddenly, when I have this two point, and next steady state for this is this. Okay. So it may touch instead of going to three, four, and five. When I am increasing temp uh, T naught slowly. Right. So, and uh, uh, from this temperature, it may go like this. Good. So that is one way. So this uh, this is called this corresponding state is called ignition.
that means suddenly it is catching fire right okay similarly what will happen if i come down so that means from this side t not 5 to yeah this is yeah t not 5 to t not 5 or sorry t not 1 to t not 5 so now when i am coming down here like this yeah this is fine okay and at this point you can see i am coming here from here to 4 so that is what it straight falls it should be straight line it is not curved i mean it's not slightly slanted but maybe i think yeah here this goes i think maybe this also i have to remove yeah so this is the point when i am coming from this side and this is the point when I am going this side. So, this point what do you think? This is ignition point. See here, you are coming from this side and then you have 9, anyway high temperature, then I have 8 and suddenly from here to 4. So, the reaction can extinguished, can get extinguished. So, this is extension point. extension on this on this line. So, that is why normally it is shown that that is the kind of hysteresis what we have. So, it goes like this and when you are coming, you are coming like this. Correct no? When you are going, you are going like this, when you are increasing temperature uh, feed, but when you are decreasing feed, then you are coming like this. So, you have this one overall, right. So, this is only just for your information and of course, uh, problems can be given on this nicely, but I think in the examination probably I will not give on this one. The reason is it takes time. You have to plot that and then carefully uh, locate those points and uh, anyway, if you correctly calculate and then draw it, uh, definitely you will get all those points, right. So, that is why it may take time. So, only may be one problem or five problems I have to give. You either do one problem or five problems. Okay, good. So, this is what I just want to tell you about uh, this, uh, you know, some more things about multiple steady state mixed flow reactor. So, as I told you, there are lot of information available. Actually, there is a book called uh, Control of Chemical Reactors huh? by J M Douglas. Remember correctly, J M Douglas. Huh? No, not Douglas. Anyway, I think, uh, sorry, I uh, forgot now. So, that is also another book only on control of reactors. In fact, you know in M tech we had earlier some kind of history, M tech we had earlier six streams, six streams over there, right. We had uh, biochemical engineering, environmental engineering, polymer engineering, chemical reaction engineering, transport phenomena and control, six uh, covered. Yeah. So, I think at that time uh, again maybe 30 or the M tech input, right. So, in every branch only uh, every stream only 5, 5, 5, 5, but some streams I think you know we, are, we used to get only 1 or 2 like that. So, at that time in chemical reaction engineering stream all these courses were there. We had a separate reactor theory course, chemical and catalytic reaction engineering course and then non catalytic reaction engineering course separately and then uh, um, uh, stability of uh, chemical reactors that was another course one more word. I think only these five courses and the remaining things anyway you have to take uh, transport phenomena and reactor theory was common to everyone. Reactor theory was common to everyone, but those who, the, who were there in the uh, reaction engineering stream, they have to take the remaining four extra that is chemical and catalytic reaction engineering, uh, non catalytic reaction engineering, stability of reactors and one more course I told I think all these courses. Okay? Good. Yeah. So, at that time we used to teach all that. Now, we have also forgotten because I think streams are rem uh, removed and uh, now I think our brain also is becoming uh, blunt, it is not sharp because when you teach also we also remember. In fact, the most beneficiary of teaching is the teacher, okay? yeah, not the student unfortunately. Okay, good. So, I think with this I have covered all this, I think anything else is no, only one or two things now just left out that is uh, our normal multiple reactors. How do you 
get the maximum. This we postponed at the time. You know, we discussed if you have uh, activation energy for one reactor is more than the activation energy of the other reactor. What do you do? How do you operate the uh, reactor? Okay. So that information I told you that when you are discussing non-isothermal reactors, we will just discuss that quickly. I will go through. That is uh, multiple reactions. temperature effects okay yeah so if i have a going to r and a going to yes this is desired our symbol so here uh, this is one and two reactions i have a case where e1 greater than e2 and other case is e1 less than e2 how do you operate this how do you operate this you have the rule already with you yeah when e1 is greater than e2 use high temperature in the reactor so that this will be forming more and more and that's what what you wanted you know that is the desired product so that is what so here i have high t high temperature and here low t good very simple so this only just uh, remind you all this again so now i have here this is desired product right and i have 1 and 2 reaction again you have case here e1 greater than e2 and e1 less than e2 yeah what is the now condition yeah if i use high temperature okay so this will be yeah so this will be forming more yeah the, you know when you go to temperature scheme after some time you have to go to low temperature but straight away uh, okay if i have this one more definitely i have to use low temperatures so that's why we write here simply here also high t and also low t but when i ask temperature scheme then you have to say that okay sir initially use high temperature and then later you go to low temperatures okay good okay so that is the one and uh, yeah when i have this one a going to r r going to all three uh, i have r s and t this is the desired product yeah this one i will just uh, nicely leave it for you this is 1 2 3 this is the desired product i will give you some kind of uh, equation One by T of T equal to optimum temperature. Here you cannot use only one temperature. Some of optimum temperature. Oh, actually, you can, sorry. You can use one temperature, but that has to depend on E1 and E2 and E3. If this one is uh, less and these two are more, okay, activation energies. Or this may be low, this may be high, this may be low. All combinations are there, okay. But even then, with all these combinations, you will get one nice equation. You please derive this equation. i don't want to derive that it is very simple only thing is you have to write equation for maximum uh, what is that there is rate there maximum yield not conversion not rate okay both doesn't uh, both do not have any meaning here it is yield okay you write an equation for yield and differentiate with respect to temperature then you will get this t out okay so that equation is r by e3 minus e1 ln of e3 minus e1 e1 k30 this 30 is a frequency factor for the third reaction good so divided by e1 minus e2 k20 so that is the equation ha huh? r is r is not product there oh sorry yeah logical logical doubt that r is you know gas constant okay good so that is the one and the last one which i want to tell you is our famous reaction what is that denby reaction 
Okay, good. So now when I go to Degbe reaction, it may be you can write here. A plus B going to um, okay R going to S. This is going to T. This is going to U or S T U. Okay, yeah. So now we call this one as one, two, three, four. Okay, I mean various combinations are possible. The first combination is E one greater than E two and E three greater than E three greater than E four. What is the temperature scheme now? Yeah, Pooja. Huh? Oh, desired product. Very good question. Yeah. Yes, see, this one is desired. Very good question. Not R. Here we have uh, yes is the one. I will ask you here. Uh, I will. I will ask. I, I will tell here yes, and I will ask in the examination R. Okay. In between. Huh? Yeah. So that means uniformly we have high temperature. That's right. Okay, good. So then you have E one less than E two, reverse of this, and E three less than E four. This is low temperature, right? So now I have here another case E one less than E two, E one less than E two, and E three greater than. E four. Ah, initially low temperature and then slowly increase the temperature. I am happy. I say. I think at least I think you are experts of these temperature schemes. Okay, activation energies. Somehow I think you like activation energy. Eh? All of you are able to answer this. Okay, this is increasing te temperature. Uh, how do I write? Okay, correct. No arrow. Increasing temperature. Good. So then uh, the other one is of course reverse of this is E one greater than E two and E three less than E four. This is decreasing temperature. Uh, maybe I think here I have to put increasing temperature is increasing temperature. Okay, good. Actually, those are good symbols, sir. Huh? When you are doing PhD work or MS work or project work, it is better always if you have four or five variables. Okay, and the dependent variable you have to see how it is getting either increasing or decreasing. So write like this. Okay, if delta p as an example, because we easily understand delta p. So delta p is increasing with velocity. Okay, so you write delta p increasing. With velocity, delta p increasing u, right? So like that, with viscosity, what happens? With density, what happens? Density of fluid, diameter of the pipe, what happens? That will give you very clear picture for your either uh, equation development or correlation development. If you write like this, all the parameters, because all of you have to do some project definitely. Okay, good. So with this, I think uh, it's very happy. Nana Sri Tharmal, I have covered this year much more than earlier. That's why I always. Uh, Rahul is scolding me, sir. You are partial to this. You are first of all very, very uh, lenient to this batch. Okay. Plus, you are also telling them more. Okay. Yeah, maybe I think this is my last thing, so that's why I have to tell more. <laughs> Because otherwise, I don't know where I have to tell later. Okay. Good. So this is the one. But I tell you, everything will be happy in the class. But the moment you cross the door, nothing will be happy for you. And next class is much worse. <laughs> Next class, you come all looking happily blank faces, fresh CD. Okay, with I think uh, you can put any memory there, but what is the use? We have fresh CD, nothing is there inside. So that is what is happening every time in every class. So now I think this is closed now, and now we have what is left is 
residence time distributions. Right? Yeah. Without writing there, I will introduce you for residence time distribution. Then we will write in the next class. Right? Residence time distribution, we discussed about ideal reactors. We also discussed uh, when we are discussing about ideal reactors, residence time distribution. Okay, Merit, what is the residence time distribution for plug flow? Zero. Zero. Why it is zero? Because it does not have any accumulation. It continues to what do you mean by accumulation? Where is the question of accumulation? No, sir. We are talking about steady state reactors. Use correct words. This is another thing. Always you will lose marks the moment you use wrong words without knowing or without thinking in the interviews. If you do not know, you keep quiet. That is much better. But if you are trying to say something which you have not understood or you do not have any meaning for that and simply say some word, people will definitely catch you. Not only merit, everyone. So, that is why, where is the accumulation in P, uh, PFR we are talking? All the particles are same velocity. Ah, the that you tell. Residence and distribution equal to 0, because every particle will spend exactly same time, sir. What kind of course, stupid question you are asking? Because where is the distribution there? Because each and every particle will exactly spend 10 seconds, means 10 seconds. If it is 11 seconds or 9 seconds only, distribution comes. Okay, Swami, just behind him. What is the residence time distribution for uh, mixed flow? Infinity. Say it by infinity. Infinity alone is a point, it is not distribution. You see, again catching points. See, if you say only distribution means you to start from where somewhere and end somewhere, I say. Yeah. Zero? Zero to infinity. Ideal reactor? We are talking about only ideal reactor. Okay, if you are ideal. <laughs> okay, yeah. It is zero to infinity. Right? Now, I think who? I think we will go to uh, Puja. Pooja, what is the residence time distribution for batch reactor? What is that? Same as P. I have to go to PFR and search. Huh? Zero. Why zero? Sir, because it is same time we take out all the materials. Yeah. Here it is by definition, but there by force. Because you are not allowing anything to go out, anything to enter in batch reactor. You are closing all the doors. Like you know, you batch system, whether you like the class or not, 15 minutes you cannot go out. So, all of you have exactly the same residence time here. What is residence time distribution? 50 minutes. For this class? 50 minutes. Residence time distribution? Zero. 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 Now, mentally, I am not talking. Physically, you are there. <laughs> mentally, you may not uh, uh, listen to me even one word also. Okay, throughout the class. You may be sitting here, you may be in your own matrix. Correct, no? I think, you know, who am, how can I check? Unfortunately, I am not new to check and then cross, oh, you are now out of the matrix or inside the matrix. So, that is why I think uh, uh, in a batch reactor also it is 0, but batch reactor normally we do not take into picture when you are talking about RTD, but particularly when it is flow only, because when it is flow, it has got its own, cho it, its own choice to go out or come in okay, for the particles. Whereas, in batch system, where is the choice? You are closing all the doors. That is why all residence time distribution is focused only on flow system. Okay. And why it is 0 for a mixed flow, why, sorry, for, for plug flow, why it is a 0 to infinity for a mixed flow, why? Because you just gave the value, but now I am asking why? All moving, but in MFR. By definition of, we defined our PFR such that there is no distribution of particles and each and every particle has to spend exactly same time. What is the best example? Conveyor belt. Please remember that. I think other than conveyor belt, you do not have anything, any reactor. Only conveyor belt will take all the particles exactly because again once they enter, they cannot walk, they will be there, that particle. It does not have legs, no. So, that is why I think all it will be taken and then at the end, whatever you fix 10 minutes, 20 minutes, like that it will come out. Example of one conveyor belt reactor. Coal combustion, mainly it is coal combustion. Okay? Because coal has always plug flow, coal particles. That means, if I have uniform size of the particle and at the end of uh, 10 minutes, each and every particle would have burnt same way, exactly same way. Right? But in reality, that is not there, that reality we will see in the next uh, semester. Okay? Good. So, this is the one. Now, 
um, this ideal uh, residence term distribution will be spoiled by non ideality parameter. What is the statement? Ideal distribution that is zero distribution for P of R, zero to infinite distribution for uh, has to come, yeah, for mixed flow CSTR will be spoiled by non ideal parameters like actual mixing, dead zones, yeah, recirculations, bypassing, these are most of the time these are only 4 5. Okay. So, that is why we have to now find out the residence term distribution for normal reactor, real reactor, not ideal reactor, and then to find uh, and, uh, and then to find out which non ideality would have created this kind of distribution. It is like you know many people are going to hospitals nowadays, you know, everyone is sick, right? Yeah. So, they go there, uh, I mean you go there and then they give you a test, maybe blood test because they cannot find out what is wrong with your body. So, by taking blood test they will know okay, this parameter is not well. So, probably this is the cause that is what exactly what we are going to also do. right? Otherwise, I mean, you have not come to that stage Maybe you will come very quickly you know this uh, diabetes stage because now it seems in India diabetes comes around 2025 earlier it was 60 okay? because the kind of food what you take is wonderful food. So, that is the reason why I think diabetes is pre -porn. Okay, I think uh, really I think in Andhra it seems is the diabetic capital of the world because those are the people they, they take this much rice and that rice has uh, only sugar nothing else. Okay? Yeah. So, that is the reason why Andhra I am not joking I know correct uh, it is <laughs> Andhra, Andhra is the capital of the world for diabetes. Huh? What is, ah, that too, three times or fourth time also. <laughs> ah, okay, fourth time they take snacks again made of rice only. Okay, so that is why that is why that is very bad. That is why North India it is slightly less because wheat is slightly better than uh, rice as far as diabetes is concerned. They will also get a little bit later, and also uh, their problem is early morning breakfast is hundred sweets. Correct, no? For example, Bengal. Ah, ninety nine. Huh? Uh, then how many? <laughs> oh, breakfast no sweet? Oh, lunch, lunch time. Every day. Then what do you take for breakfast? Paratha roti. Every day you eat? Yeah. Okay. But I think which state? I think uh, Rajasthan. Huh? Um, all sweets only morning. Or uh, Gujarat? Uh, Gujarat. Yeah. 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 I mean, we are great in that. You know, somewhere, somewhere, non ideality will be there. Always. <laughs> yeah. So, that is why particularly when you when the, when the sugar patients go there, they will give uh, glucose into your mouth, correct no? Early, early what, that, what is that empty stomach you have to go and then they take the blood test and afterwards they will pour you 5 ml or uh, 10 ml into your mouth and then after 1 hour or half an hour you know maybe half an hour and also maybe 1 hour, 1 hour, 2 hours, so 1.5 hours, 2 hours, 2.5 hours, they take the samples. What they are doing? They are exactly doing tracer test. That is what we also inject tracer, and at the outlet we try to calculate. Um, we try to collect samples. Then, depending on that ca tracer concentration, I mean this uh, sugar concentration, glucose concentration, then they will find out for a healthy body there is a curve, ideal reactor. Correct? No, for a healthy body, how the sugar will be absorbed by the body there is a curve. So now, for non-healthy body, it can go anywhere. <laughs> For healthy body there is only one curve, for non-healthy body there are thousands of curves. So, correct no? Because you may have some kind of problem, I may have some kind of problem. Okay? So, that is why they try to check and then try to find out whether they have either healthy body or wrong body. So, if they have that one, I mean sugar then they will correct you and all that, they, that is different. That is what exactly we are going to find out here. Because we know the ideal reactor uh, uh, you know response, the graphs. But only thing is now we have to develop some equations also for ideal reactors and then compare always uh, yeah, with that curve what is the experimental curve. Okay? So, that is what is the overall picture and unfortunately I have to take I think you know, more time I have to spend uh, maybe next class uh, and this uh, residence time distribution normally we talk only for one phase. What we have talked till now is only for homogeneous uh, reactors. right? But if I have two phases like coal combustion 
I have coal particles solid and also air entering for uh, combustion. Now, I have to find out how coal is entering and leaving and how air is entering and leaving. Same thing for example, catalytic reactions. Catalyst is in the packet bed and air is uh, sorry, uh, the reactants are entering getting uh, converted and uh, products are coming out. I have to now, now uh, find out what is happening to catalyst, but fortunately here catalyst is batch, it is not moving. So, RTD for catalyst will not come, correct no? But if I take moving bed, I can use moving bed catalytic reactors. So, the particles also are moving, maybe co current okay, going up or maybe counter current solids coming, gas going up. Now, I have to find out gas is moving in plug flow or so, uh, particles are coming down in plug flow or gas is moving in mixed flow, only two flows ideally, right? Or solids are coming in mixed flow, you have to find out. A, a little bit extension, slurry reactors. So, when you have slurry reactor, you have three phases. What are the phases? Gas, liquid, and solid. Solid is the, I mean, if you take example of hydrogenation of vegetable oils, what is the catalyst? What is the gas? Hydrogen and what is the liquid? Unsaturated oil. Okay. Now, you have many possibilities. I can take for example, oil as batch, solids also as batch and gas only bubbling. So, when these two are batch, I do not have to worry much about them, okay. but I have to worry about bubbles whether they are going in plug flow or whether they are going in mixed flow. That means, all the bubbles are spending exactly same time or some bubbles are coming very quickly, some bubbles are coming very late then you have 0 to infinite residence time distribution, like a story I am trying to tell you. So, now what will happen if I have uh, liquid also moving, liquid also continuously coming, continuously coming, going out. Now, that will be in mixed flow or whether it is really in mixed flow or not we have to check. So, that is why for multiple reactions for every phase you have to check whether it is mixed flow or so, these are the techniques we, we are trying to develop in the next few classes. Mm -hmm.